Hello dear students, this is our lecture 8 of the series Introduction to Quantum Mechanics and today our lecture is about connecting classical and quantum worlds. We'll talk about the Poisson brackets and commutators and their properties. In our last lecture, we discussed the set of postulates that we need to construct a quantum theory. Today we'll try to see the connection between the classical and quantum worlds I've already told you that it's not possible to construct a quantum theory totally independently. We need to have a classical theory. In a more technical language, we say that quantum mechanics is obtained by quantizing a classical theory. Today, we will try to get more insight about the connection between the two seemingly different worlds. We start with a classical system that is described by a Hamiltonian. So we, we, we talk about Hamiltonian version of classical system, classical dynamics. So we start with the Hamiltonian edge, and we know that in classical mechanics, this Hamiltonian is a function of canonically conjugate pairs of position and momentum, and could depend on time as well. Q and P are canonically conjugate variables, dynamical quantities, in a very simple language, they could be simply ordinary positions and momenta. And they could be angle and angular momentum. And remember that whenever you multiply these conjugate pairs, they always have the dimensions of Planck's constant. That you must keep it in mind because that's very useful when we connect Poisson brackets with commutators. Now the question is that in a classical system, we know that we have a phase space we have a phase space, position and uh, momentum space, where a dot in the phase space describes our system. Now, the question is that the trajectory in the phase space would tell us how the system would evolve with time. So the dynamics of the system or dynamics of the physical quantities Q and P are given through the canonical equations. And let's write down these canonical equations. So canonical equations of motion are, let's write down canonical equations of motion. So they tell us that the time evolution of the position variable is given by the partial derivative of Hamiltonian function with respect to momentum and uh, the time evolution of the momentum, canonical momentum is given by negative partial derivative of Hamiltonian with respect to the coordinate, canonic, coordinate uh, with respect to the coordinate variable or canonical position, okay. Now, We can write uh, these equations as Q dot. Another way of writing them is as Q dot is delta H by delta P or P dot again can be written as minus delta H by delta Q. Okay, and these are very important equations. Now let's uh, introduce uh, but now we'll introduce Poisson brackets and we'll see some of the fascinating features of Poisson brackets. So how would we do that? So we take a physical quantity F. Okay, suppose we have a physical major F, which is a function of uh, Q, P, and T. Right, and then we can write uh, the using chain rule that uh, DF, by dt, the time evolution of this, this function is given by delta f by delta q, q dot plus delta f by delta p, p dot, and plus delta f by delta t if f depends on time explicitly. Now, so far so good. 
Now what we can do is that we can use these uh, canonical equations of motion and replace q dot and p dot with the, the partial derivatives of Hamiltonian. So we can write down that df divided by dt, the time evolution of the function f is equal to, I can write as df by dq, and for q dot, we can write dh by dp, and then because p dot is minus dh by dq, so I write minus here, delta f by delta p, then dh by dq, and then we have the final term, del f by del t. Now we introduce an algebraic construct here called Poisson bracket. Pb is very useful. Let's introduce Poisson bracket as Poisson bracket of a comma b. It is defined as del a by del q into del b by del p minus del a by del q, del p, sorry, del p, del b by del q. So we define a Poisson bracket through this definition, all right. So far so good, so you can see that then this is f h Poisson bracket. So I can write that time evolution of the function df by dt is given by the Poisson bracket of f with h plus the partial derivative of f with respect to the time. So if f does not depend on time explicitly, then we say that, so if delta f by delta t is zero, then the time evolution of the dynamical quantity f is given by simply as its Poisson bracket with the Hamiltonian. And if the Poisson bracket with Hamiltonian vanishes, so if, if the physical quantity is defined in such a way that Poisson bracket vanishes, if that is true, then that would imply df by dt is, is, is zero, which means that f is constant or f is a conserved quantity. What are the interesting and advantages of these Poisson brackets? So you can see that we have seen that if the Poisson bracket of a dynamical quantity, you know, with Hamiltonian is zero, then that physical quantity is a conserved quantity provided that quantity does not depend on time explicitly. And uh, let me tell you that most of the interesting features are directly obtained through the Poisson bracket algebra in a classical system. And uh, also Poisson brackets are free from choice of coordinate system. These brackets are valid at each instant of time and does not matter which coordinate system you have prescribed. Let's now discuss some of the properties of these brackets. For n degrees of freedom, we can write, we can define a Poisson bracket between f and g as sum i to n. del f by del pi del g by del qi minus del f by del qi del g by del pi. So this is a general statement for n degrees of freedom. Also some of other interesting properties, once we have this definition, we can easily figure out that Poisson bracket 
between two physical quantities f and g they that is equal to minus g of f that's very easy to see also if we have a constant say if one of the physical quantities is constant so then the differentiation of the constant is zero so f of alpha so the poisson bracket with a constant is always zero and poisson bracket for physical quantity with itself is also zero also they they have they obey the distributive structure they have the distributive structure so very interesting algebra that is that can be developed for a classical system and provides a very very important insight in the classical problems so f plus g of h is a distributive uh, it also entertains a distributive construct or a structure of this kind that f plus g of h is Poisson bracket of f and h and Poisson bracket of g and h then we have if we have a project Poisson bracket of f dot g multiplication of two functions or dynamical quantities that would be equal to f Poisson bracket of g and h and plus g Poisson bracket of f and h and also f square of g is two times f f of g okay that can be actually obtained from the above 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 rule which we call as product rule this we call as product rule okay this is the distributive rule that is distributive rule okay good enough so then we also have some interesting important poisson brackets for example poisson bracket of uh, f and qi is uh, delta f by delta pi very important to note poisson bracket of f of pi is equal to minus del f of del qi so you can see that uh, now equations of motion take uh, the algebraic form and then uh, we have uh, qi and uh, qk two canonical position coordinates their poisson bracket is zero and for two canonical momentum coordinates this is a, you can just check it with say x and y and px and py that's very easy to check and then very important poisson bracket is that pj pk is delta jk means it can be either one or zero depending on uh, uh, whether uh, i is equal to k j is equal to k or j is not equal to k then we have a very very important property which we call as jacobs identity that's also satisfied by the poisson brackets so f of g of h you know if you have these three Poisson brackets plus plus cyclic order. So if we take the cyclic order for all three combinations, that is always zero. Very important, right? And, uh, and then there is something called a Poisson theorem. That's a very very important theorem. So we call it Poisson's theorem. What does Poisson theorem tell us? It tells us if suppose. Uh, f is a constant of motion right and g is also a constant of motion then it implies that their poisson bracket is also a constant of motion this is a very very important result right and you know it provides a very deep insight into classical systems now let's go to the quantum mechanics and see how things shape up there and um, let's try to uh, see how things appear now similar 
in case of uh, quantum physics. So let us see in quantum physics, how do we shape, what, what, what will happen to these Poisson brackets there? How do we have equations of motion there? Uh, like how do we describe the uh, time evolution of the physical quantities and, and things like that. So let us go to the quantum world, okay. Let's get quantum, okay. So we know that in quantum mechanics, we have two fundamental operators. One is the position operator, other is the momentum operator. And the momentum operator in, in configuration space is I H bar, this del operator, which is del by del X plus del by del Y plus del by del Z, or we can say that PX operator would simply be minus I H bar del by del X to be, uh, to be to keep things very simple. Then many operators, in fact, most of the operators can be expressed in terms of these position and momentum operators. For example, Hamiltonian operator for uh, particle uh, having some momentum. So is P square operator by 2M plus V and V we know depends on X. So it depends on the X operator. Right, so let us see. Um, let us uh, see how how these operators operate on a function. So let us take up a, a wave function psi x, and let's operate it first with x. So then we have x uh, psi of x. For example, I have so it's an eigenfunction of x. So it's x psi of x. Then um, let us say p x. Uh, x of psi of x, let's look at that. So we know px is h cross by i, this is del by del x of, and this would be x psi of x, okay? And now that would become h cross by i, and then I differentiate it, so psi x would remain as it is, then uh, plus uh, the, uh, x will be one, the differentiation of x is one psi x as it is. Now I keep x as it is, this is del psi by del x. So I will have two terms. One is h bar by i psi of x, and the other term is x h bar by i del psi by del x. Now let's operate this in the reverse order and see what's going to happen. So we take the wave function and first operate with P of X of Psi of X. That is H bar by I del Psi of X by del X. Now, then we operate with X operator, PX of Psi of X, and this would be X H bar I uh, del of psi of x by del x, okay. Okay, then uh, uh, if we subtract the two, we have that um, um, if we subtract the two, so we have x p of x minus p x of x operator of psi of x is equal to the second term would cancel so it would be minus or simply i h bar psi of x. So one can write now, one can write, one can write that um, uh, x p of x minus p x x of psi of x is i h bar psi of x. We define this product as this 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 algebraic structure as commutator. So we say that for any two operators A and B, we define a commutator commutator of A B as operator A operator B minus operator B operator A. So this would mean that that operator X operator P, the commutator of this operator, is I H bar. Similarly, we can find the commutation relations between the other operators, right? So this becomes our one of our fundamental operators, right? And um, one of our fu fundamental commutators. So this is called a commutator. And we say that if uh, A 
B operator is equal to zero, then we say that, then we say that, that the two operators commute. The two operators commute. So it means that X and PX do not commute and any two operators that do not commute, they cannot be obtained simultaneously. That is the idea behind this uh, commutation relation. And we'll see that these commutation relations almost have similar kind of structure as Poisson brackets have in classical mechanics. So that is the basic idea. So let's go to the expectation values and check out the connection, okay? Remember that we define expectation value of an operator A. And how do we define it for a normalized wave function? It is psi star A psi and dx, that is p1 dimensional, okay? Now then what do we do here is that, let us see how the expectation value of A changes with time. So how does that expectation value of A evolve with time? So now I can write this as, so there are three, uh, uh, these uh, involved, three variables involved. So I can write this is del psi star by del t, keep A operator as it is, psi as it is, this is operator A, and uh, plus, then I keep psi star as it is, del A operator divided by del t, of psi, then the third term would be psi star as it is, A as it is, del psi by del t and dx of all that. Okay. Now we know what the uh, equation of uh, motion is here. Here, the equation of motion is, uh, uh, remember it is Schrodinger equation. So the Schrodinger equation gives us the time evolution of the wave function. So i h bar del psi by del t that is equal to h psi. That is the Schrodinger equation. So this gives me del psi by del t is minus h bar, one by h bar, okay. Uh, i by h bar, sorry, because the minus will go this I, bar, I, I, I imaginary iota will go up and it will become minus of psi. Okay, good. So this would mean that del psi star by del t would be equal to plus i by h bar h of psi star. So I'm going to use that and use the proper Hermitian property of, of the Hamiltonian operator. So I will exploit it and uh, substitute it back. So what do we have? So we get D of expectation value of A with DT, right, expectation, the time evolution of the expectation value of A with, is equal to I, by h bar integral of psi star h a minus uh, psi minus psi star a h of psi and there is one more term this is dx plus there is one more term which is integration of psi star del a by del t of psi and dx. So I can write this as i by h bar. This is the expectation of, so the commutator of h and a plus the time rate change of the expectation of A. So uh, expectation, sorry, it is then expectation of the entire thing because you know, this is psi star del A by del T of psi. So this would be the expectation of this entire thing. Okay. So I can rewrite this, equa this equation of motion as D of 
a by dt is equal to i by h bar, then you can see that expectation of h and a uh, commutator, expectation of that commutator plus the expectation of del a by del t. Now you remember that if you if you if you compare it with uh, a classical system, you can see that the equations of the dynamics of uh, a physical quantity look almost similar. The only thing here is that the Poisson bracket seems to be replaced by i by h bar and the commutator of h and a, and that the dynamical quantities are replaced by operators. Again, we can say that you see. Again, we say here also that if uh, if uh, this uh, this expectation of a uh, time derivative of a is zero, and that if uh, h commutes with a, right, the commutation is zero, then we have the dynamical quantity a, the expectation of value of a, uh, it doesn't depend on time, it's constant. So it is there constant of motion in this case. So, so we have almost similar kind of, we can see that uh, you know, we have conservative quantities we discover again with the help of the similar kind of relation, but here in a set of Poisson brackets, the conservation uh, rules are contained in commutators, right? So it's a very interesting feature that if a physical quantity commutes with a Hamiltonian, then that uh, operator, that the physical quantity corresponding to that operator is a conserved observable. So this is very important and very interesting feature. And then one can also write down all the interesting uh, algebraic uh, uh, the rules that the commutators obey. They have the similar kind of algebraic rules. For example, we can take a commutator A plus B, right, of two operators and see, again, you will see that distributive feature that it is A and uh, C commutator plus uh, the B commutator with C. Okay, and then we can have, this is a rule that's obeyed, and then we can have this, uh, if we have A, B, and C, again, you can see that almost a similar kind of structure, A, B, C, plus, um, uh, uh, then we have B, no, sorry, we have uh, A, uh, C, and B. And all these are very useful and uh, they, they can be used to get a deeper insight, a deeper understanding of quantum mechanical problems. And, and keep this in mind that uh, general rules, some general rules that are very important and that we obtain through these commutation relations are that uh, x uh, px is uh, same as uh, y commutator py is same as uh, Z P Z is equal to I H bar and uh, X uh, P Y and uh, is equal to X P Z. Any 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 different of them where these indices are different and so on, they are zero. Okay, so we we have a rule that uh, X I we can say that X I or uh, P J something like this is equal to i h bar delta i j. So uh, important uh, uh, kind of thing that we have. This is something very interesting and important that we also saw a similar kind of structure in classical mechanics in terms of Poisson brackets. So because the connecting relation and that uh, dynamical quantities can be uh, um, all dynamical variables can be upgraded to operators and the scheme of uh, going from classical to quantum mechanics is called quantization. So remember that rule is called as quantization. So I hope you enjoyed the lecture and uh, see you in the next lecture and please uh, give your comments and share the ideas about this lecture. I will be very happy to answer your queries and uh, Hope you take care and uh, be happy and uh, bye-bye.